Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm going to be answering in this video a question from the Solomon J C3 collection, um, which is about differentiation of trig um, functions. And this is also question seven from my uh, end of topic worksheet and for chapter six, which is differentiation one. I have another one uh, called differentiation two. And I've been requested to answer this question by one of my students. So I'll go ahead and get on with it straight away. Question number seven from my worksheet. Question number four from the Solomon J paper. Now, we're told that x equals the secant of the angle y over 2. And the angle y is between 0 and pi. And we're told to show that dy dx is equal to 2 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And um, basically, we have to differentiate this with respect to, to the, we've got to find dy dx. And we have to leave our answer in terms of x. No y is in the answer. Okay, now, for us to um, find dy dx, what you normally would do in a question is, is rearrange a formula to make it y as a subject. But in this case, uh, making y as a subject is not really going to be very helpful at all because what's going to happen is you're going to have some sort of arc secant you know in the in the answer which is going to be very difficult to differentiate so what we're going to do is we're going to instead of finding dy dx we're going to find the x dy okay we're going to find the x dy and then we're going to uh, rearrange it to find dy dx so what we're going to do is we'll do this we'll say if x equals secant of y over 2 We need to find dx dy. So let's find dx dy first. So dx dy. Now, one of the results that we should know from our um, you know, experience of differentiation and also from the formula book that you'll have in the exam. So if you do forget this, it's not a big, big deal. You can look at the formula book. Is that the differential of secant of theta. Okay, the differential, if you want to differentiate the secant of an angle, let's say secant of theta with respect to theta, is going to be secant of the angle times the tan of that same angle. Okay, so if I differentiate secant of y over 2 with respect to y, I'll get secant of y over 2 multiplied by tan of y over 2. However, because there's a function inside the function, this is like secant of a half y, I have to also differentiate what's inside the function by the chain rule and multiply my answer by that you know that that what that product so or by that differential so i have to i have to multiply my answer by a half because the differential of y over 2 is a half so my dy dx becomes a half times secant y over 2 times tan y over 2 so i'll just rewrite this slightly differently um, to make it easy for the next step i'll call this secant of y over 2 times the tan of the angle y over 2 divided by 2. So we want to find dy dx. So what I can do is write down this as its reciprocal upside down because this is dx dy. dy dx is the same thing where the numerator is um, becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. So you've got 2 divided by the secant of y over 2 times the tan of y over 2. So we've got something which is in the right type of form, except we have to replace these things which are in terms of y and make them in terms of x. Now, one of them is staring us right in the face because x equals secant y over 2. If I take that, if I say x equals secant y over 2, which is what we started with, well, I can see that this is secant y over 2. So I can replace the secant y over 2 with this x. So I've got this part done. So it's 2 over x. That part's done. You've got the 2, you've got the x. Now it's this part here, which is tan of y over 2. So we have to find out what tan of y over 2 is in terms of x. Now there's two approaches we can take. Okay, One of the approaches we can take is by using a, a right angle triangle. So I'm going to use this, what they told us, x equals, x equals secant y over 2. So um, if I say secant of y over 2 secant of the angle y over 2 is equal to x let me say that's x over 1 
And if I draw a right angle triangle, a right angle triangle, and I call this angle over here y over 2. Now the secant of y over 2 is the reciprocal of the cosine of y over 2, and the cosine of y over 2 would be um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So this would be your um, hypotenuse, and this would be your adjacent. Okay, if I wrote cosine of y over 2, this would have to be the reciprocal of that, which is 1 over x. That's adjacent, and that's the hypotenuse. So the, they, those give you the same thing. If, you, if you're not comfortable with this, you can rewrite it as, as its reciprocal, and then you'll be comfortable with it. And knowing that this is a right angle triangle, and knowing the hypotenuse and one of the shorter sides, I can find the other shorter sides by Pythagoras. So I know that the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the other shorter side, square of 1 is 1, um, square rooted will give me the opposite side here, which is the other shorter side. So now, remember what I'm trying to find? I'm trying to find what the tan of y over 2 is. Now the tan of y over 2, therefore, the tan of y over 2 is going to be the square root of x squared minus 1. So I can replace that with the square root of x squared minus 1. So now I can say dy dx is equal to 2 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And we have our answer. Uh, alternatively, instead of using this method, we could have used the fact that we have an identity that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of an angle equals 1. And from this, we can deduce another identity involving tan, uh, tan squared theta and sec squared theta. So if we divide both of these by cosine squared theta, we end up with the identity um, tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So we can use the identity here. So we can say that let's just change this to tan squared of the angle y over 2 plus 1 equals the secant squared of the angle y over 2. Because basically the tan squared of an angle plus 1 equals secant squared of the same angle. This time we're going to call the angle y over 2 because that's what we're given here. So I can replace the secant y over 2 with x. So I'll end up with tan squared y over 2 plus 1 equals, now if the secant squared means all of this whole thing is going to be squared. So if secant y over 2 is x, secant squared y over 2 is x squared. So now I can rearrange this and subtract 1 from both sides. So tan squared y over 2 equals x squared minus 1. And then tan of y over 2 is, of course, um, the square root of x squared minus 1. Now, you should, you, you'll be aware that you can either have a positive or a negative square root when you take the square root of both sides. So how do we know that it's not the negative square root? That's the question that maybe you might be asking yourself. Why did we not have a minus here? What makes it a social? It's going to be a plus. Okay, well, the answer is a positive. So that's one thing. But just for you to understand, um, we can think about it in terms of identity because they've told us that the range of values of what the angle y is between 0 and pi. Okay, and we're dealing here with secant of y over 2 and tan of y over 2. Okay, so if you think about those, um, if you think about the graph of secant of y over 2 and the graph of tan of y over 2. Now, the secant of y over 2, okay, um, is the reciprocal of cosine of y over 2. So the cosine of, 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 of an angle, um, the cosine of an angle would normally okay, have a, um, it would start from 0, and when, it, when it's 0 degrees, it will start from 1. Then at pi over 2, it will get to 0, and then at pi, it will get to minus 1, like this. But because this is, um, you know, y over 2, it's been stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. Okay, so instead of it coming down to pi over 2 like this, it's going to go all the way to pi like this. So it won't go into the negative side. Okay, it won't go into the negative side until it reaches pi. Okay, and you can see this stops just before pi. So it doesn't quite get to 0 even. It gets to there. Okay, just before it reaches pi, this part stops. 
So that the, that's always going to be positive. This part's always going to be positive. So this x will be positive because it's going to be the secant of a, an angle, you know, which will be in this region here. Okay, because the secant, remember, if the if the cosine is positive, then the secant will also be positive. So if you think about the secant, it's going to look like this. That will be an asymptote here. So the sec I'm, I'm talking about cosine, but the, it's actually the secant what we're worrying about. But because you know the secant is a reciprocal of a cosine, the secant will go like this. It will be positive. In all of this range, it will be positive. It's just a reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so if cosine is positive, if, you know, one over something positive will also be positive. And also, the other thing that we got here is tan of y over two. Now, tan of y over two. Okay, um, the tan of an angle normally, if it's like, a, you know, just tan of x, will have an asymptote at 90 degrees, and then it will go like this. But this is y over 2. So again, this is also stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. So instead of the asymptote being at pi over 2, it's going to be at pi. So this is going to go something like this. It's going to go something like this. It's going to go closer to the x-axis. So again, it's going to be positive in the whole of this range because it's tan of y over 2. So it's the, the asymptote moves along to pi. It's doubled, you know, the, the length is doubled. So the curve on this part is going to be positive as well. Okay, so we know that for sure that this is a positive answer. It's 2 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So we need to take just the positive part of that, not the negative, because the angle that we're dealing with is, you know, that the range that we're dealing with here, it's always going to be a positive value for both tan and for secant of y over 2. And there's the answer to question number 4, part A. Now, I didn't go into, I mean, I went into a bit more detail, really, but I just wanted to explain this this concept. Many students, they don't realize these small points, and, you know, it just helps to, to broaden our understanding. If you didn't realize that, there's no problem. You can just write the answer like this. You won't lose any marks or anything like that, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, now for part B. Um, it says, find an equation for the tangent to the curve y equals 3 plus 2 cosine x at the point where x equals pi over 3. Now, they ask us to find the equation for the tangent to a curve. Now, the equation of a tangent to a curve, now a tangent is a straight line. Okay, a straight line, to find the equation of a straight line, you need two things. You need to have the gradient of the line, and you need to know a point on the line. If you have those two things, you can then use your formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and you can find the equation. So we need to find the gradient of the tangent and any point on the line. Okay, now, we know that we want to find the equation for the tangent at the point where x equals pi over 3. So this is the x value of the point, and we have to find the y value of the point, and we have to find the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so let's first find the y value of the point. So we know that the y value is going to be equal to the square root of 3 plus 2 times uh, cosine of x. Now x is pi over 3. And the cosine of pi over 3 is the cosine of 60, which is a half. So you have this is going to be the square root of 3 plus 2 times a half, which is the square root of 3 plus 1, square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, so that's equal to 2. So that's the point, um, 2. So that's the point. The point that we got is, therefore, pi over 3 and 2. So we know the point now. Okay, that's the point. Now we need to find the gradient. Now to find the gradient when x equals pi over 3, we need to find the gradient function, which is what we find when we find dy dx. So dy dx. All right, so first of all, let's get it ready for differentiation. Let's call it y equals, now it's all under the square root, so we want to write this in index form. So this is 3 plus 2 times cosine of x to the power of a half. Now to differentiate this, we're going to use the chain rule. So we say dy dx is equal to, so we multiply by the power, so we have half times 3 plus 2 times cosine of x to the power of negative a half. That's, that's, that's dif in, sorry, differentiating the main function. Multiply by the power, take one from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. 
Now inside the function you have 3 plus 2 cosine x. If you differentiate 3 it becomes 0. If you differentiate 2 cosine x it becomes a minus 2 times sine, two, sorry, minus 2 of sine x. So minus 2 times sine of x. Okay, so there we have um, the differential. So we can just maybe write that as an, a bit neater. That's going to be minus 2 times a half, which is minus 1. So you'll have minus, um, you can say minus sine x times 3 plus 2 cosine x. Okay, so that's the answer for the gradient. We've got to find when when x equals pi over 3 when x equals pi over 3 we got to find what the gradient is so when x equals pi over 3 we got to find dy dx which is going to be minus sine of pi over 3 times 3 plus 2 cosine of pi over 3 all right, so that's going to give you minus. Now, the sine of pi over 3 is the sine of 60, which is going to be root 3 over 2. So that's root 3 over 2 times, and you've got 3 plus, the cosine of pi over 3 is a half, so that's 3 plus 1, okay, which is going to be 4. So you're left with, um, what am I doing here? That's to the power of negative a half. That's to the power of negative a half, sorry. So you have... Uh, minus root 3 over 2 times 4 to the power of negative a half. Okay, so what that gives you is what follows. That gives you um, that gives you minus root 3 over 2 times 1 over the square root of, 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 a half, of 4, which is 2. Okay, which is minus root 3 over 4. So the gradient of the tangent is minus root 3 over 4 and the point that it passes through is pi over 3 and 2 okay so that's the gradient of the tangent okay and that's the point pi over 3 and 2 so now we can use our formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 so y minus y1 equals the gradient times x minus x1 so y minus y1 which is 2 equals m which is minus root 3 over 4 times x minus x1 which is pi over 3. Now what form do they want it? Find an equation. So they didn't give us any particular form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write it in the form like ax plus by plus c kind of form. So let me just multiply by 4. So you're going to have 4y minus 8 equals minus root 3 times x and plus this will be um, pi times root 3 um, over 3 okay so we can leave it well I guess it's better for us to write it with let's just put this up here somewhere out of the way oops okay so I'm, I'm guessing we can um, maybe write it as just multiply by 3 you have 12y minus 3 8 to so 24 um, equals minus 3 root 3 times x plus pi root 3 uh, I guess you could leave it like this okay 3 root 3x plus 12y um, minus 24 minus pi root 3 equals 0 something like that is fine we could have also wrote it in the form y equals mx plus c at this point we could have said y um, minus 2 equals minus root 3 over 4 times x plus and that would give us um, pi times root 3 over 12 so we can then say y equals minus root 3 over 4x plus pi root 3 over 12 plus 2. Okay, we could have written something like that, y equals mx plus c. Um, either of those are perfectly fine because they didn't state how to write the answer. It says find an equation for the tangent of the curve. So you can write it in the form y equals mx plus c or ax plus by plus c equals 0. Either of them would be perfectly fine. So that's how you deal with the questions such as this. Um, and that's the end of this question. Thank you for watching. I hope you understood everything fine. And um, I'll see you again.
soon.